Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I'm going to cover a topic that I get a lot of questions about. And that question is, can I build the truck and then install a sound system and lights later? And the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, I, you know, the truck's expensive, I don't want to buy everything right now, or my skill level is I want to build the truck. Yes, to me, a trucks are designed so you can build them, and then they're easy to take apart later and install sound. This um, Aeromax uh, was just on a two-part video that I did on how to install, how to build the Aeromax for novices. And so today I'm going to install a Tamiya MFC sound and light system in it. Um, but whether you're installing a Tamiya MFC or a Bayer SFR1, you can do it in a truck that's already built. I recommend, actually, if you're doing your first truck, build it stock first and then add things later. Uh, the only thing I absolutely would recommend when you build the truck at first is to put a ball bearing kit in it. But other than that, you can build it. It easily comes apart. To me, kits are held together with nuts and bolts and screws, so it's not hard to do at all. Uh, so, the MFC, we'll install it, we'll show how to wire it up, we'll show how to operate it. Let's get started. So here we go. I titled this video, How to Install an MFC into an Already Completed Truck. This is a Ford Aeromax that I recently built. You can find the part one and two videos on how I built this on my um, YouTube channel. But now I'm going to take it apart and install a Tamiya MFC. So I've got the MFC here, an MFC 01. And, uh, you know, it's really easy to do after the trucks are finished. A lot of people think they have to do it when they build the truck. No, you really don't. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So the first thing I'm going to do is disassemble the truck a bit. Then we'll open up this uh, this MFC box and we'll go through it step by step and install it in the truck. And when we're done, we'll have lights and sound and and all that cool stuff. And we'll show you how it works. So we'll start by disassembling the truck. Now that's pretty easy on this truck. hold the body on. Grand haulers, globe liners, trucks like that, you might have up to eight screws that hold the body on, but that's what's great about these kits. Everything's screwed together, so that makes it easy to take apart. Alright. Okay, so that was really hard. Oh wait, no, it wasn't hard. Okay, so we're going to take the body off. I'm going to take off the front bumper, which is held on with four screws. And I'm going to take off the coupler plate, the coupler deck. I actually don't even need to take that off. And then I'm going to take the rear bumper off, which is held on by four screws. So we're going to move this, this, front bumper, and then we'll come back and take a closer look. Well, as you can see, I've got those parts removed, so let me... Set this truck aside here. Let me move the body up out of the way a little bit. So I've got my bumper, which has got fog lights in it. I've got my uh, rear bumper, which has, has turn signals and tail lights. And I've got my coupler, which is going to get a coupler switch installed. And then the rest of the lights are going to go in the box. So let's take a look at this uh, MFC kit here. Slide that out. We've got an instruction sheet, warning sheet, um, a sticker sheet, several trees of plastic parts, and then our box, which just has some tie wraps, a vibration motor, several bags of screw, vibration motor parts, wiring harnesses, more screws. A photo etch sheet with some mounting brackets. The MFC unit itself. Control panel for the MFC unit. And a speaker. So that's the contents of the MFC box. Now the main things we're going to do, of course, are mount the lights, mount the MFC in the control panel, the vibration unit, and the speaker. So, uh, let's take a quick peek at the instructions here. 
I think I'll move my camera a little bit. Okay, multifunction control unit instructions. Uh, several different languages, but English is in there. And a typical layout of a multifunction unit in a truck. Although there's no such thing as a typical truck. Uh, I hook up. This is the important diagram on this page, which is where the strings plug in. This is the important diagram on this page, which gives you the color code. So, for example, pop this open here. All these wires have a different color code. So, you take yellow and blue, you can go here and see yellow and blue is uh, yellow, yellow, green, yellow and blue is a right and left turn signals and those are slash R which means these are the rear left and right turn signals. So the color coding tells you where things go and then as we get further back it talks about how to use the MFC. I'm going to discuss that because the way I use it is much different than the way Tamaya uses it. Stick movements, again, I'll discuss that. And then uh, here we start looking at how to lay out the components in each individual truck. And uh, so if you've got a, a king hauler, for example, they show you to do it this way. Um, and so on and so forth. They, here's instructions on how to assemble the vibration unit how to assemble the coupler. We're going to go through these. And then how, how to assemble the lights and the control box for some individual trucks. So you can see here, this is the Aeromax roof. So this shows how to install the LEDs in an Aeromax. And what they're showing here is how to install a control panel in an Aeromax. And they give you some specific parts here for the Aeromax and these replace the fuel tank and mount the control panel inside of it which will then fit down under the aero skirt on the Aeromax. Uh, these are for the night hauler and these are for some um, Euro trucks. Okay, so we got the instructions, we got our parts. Let's start with coupler. So why would we want to take the coupler apart or do anything with a coupler with an MFC? Well, I'll tell you why. There is a switch right here. And this switch mounts inside the coupler. You see it's a little micro switch. And what that does is when a truck latches on it activates the switch and makes coupling sounds and uncoupling sounds, uh, which actually sound pretty cool. And the other thing it does is it slightly decreases the amount of power the truck has when the trailer's disconnected and or increases it slightly when a trailer's connected. So, first thing we got to do is mount this in the coupler. Again, we're looking at an assembled truck, so we've got two more screws to remove. See what I mean? It only takes a few minutes. I've, I've spent just a few minutes taking this truck apart. So it is easy to do later. Set that plate aside. Now you'll notice they give you parts here. And the parts are a different shape. And I know, truck guys, I know. This is called a fifth wheel. I know. I call it a coupler. I've called it a coupler my whole life. I'm an old guy. It's hard for me to learn new things. I will try to call it a fifth wheel. But if I call it a coupler, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, this fifth wheel is flat on the front and this one's completely round. So, we don't even have to use this part. Um, it is now obsolete. The latch mechanism, the metal plate underneath, uh, everything is now not going to be used. The only thing that we need uh, from this whole assembly is this metal plate right here. The mounting plate doesn't come in the MFC parts. So we have to pull the clip, pull the pin, and take this out, and then we will assemble this new coupler. So I'll go ahead and get those parts ready. 
I just did the normal assembly of the coupler here. You can see it, it is different than the uh, coupler that came on the truck, including having the activation ball on the opposite side, which is no problem because on the on the uh, Tamiya bracket, you can just flip it over to the other side. So uh, now it's time to install the switch. Now this is a little bit of a trick. I like to use some Tamiya ceramic grease in here, and I just plop some grease in this trough, and then there's this little spring here that just sticks down in there. Now for me, the grease helps hold it on. Then what I do is really hard to see here. This little lip, I catch the spring. The spring will actually sit in this area. So if I'm careful, I can grab the spring with that lip. go and it <laughs> yeah it does that bunch so anyway we'll get it in here and that's our little uh, activation and the spring pushes it back that will activate the switch when the cover goes okay the next part is this cover let me get reset here Okay, now it's time to put the switch in. Now the switch, it just, there's some fiddly little parts in here. It just sits in this cover like this. And you can see it in there. But what they do is they give you this little teeny screw here. This little guy comes in the parts bag. There's a hole in the switch that lines up with this hole in the cover. And you can just kind of play with it until the screw goes through the hole. And then you're ready to install it. Now I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on this one and this one. Those are the two screws that hold it down. They also give you this little teeny screwdriver in the kit. So now the trick is to just line this all up and get that screw threaded into the hole. It's really not that bad. Okay, so now our switch works. The wires, you just have to kind of pull them forward around this metal bracket and then it takes a 3 by 8 screw in the front. Normal size screw. Holds that down. And then in the back end, they give you this funky nut that has got knurls on it. And uh, so it's self-grabbing. Bites into the plastic. And I find these things are a pain to put on. You can turn this and it just you just got to get it to grab. Sometimes I'll have to push it in with a pair of tweezers. That one grabs okay. All right, so there's a coupler all set to go. Now we just put our bracket that we removed from the original coupler back on. So we've got our we've got one here with a spring already on it. We're just reusing the old one. And then it mounts through here. And then we put a C-clip on it, and then we use the same two screws to mount it back to the coupler plate. And I pull the wire through this hole, and then we're done. So, I'll finish that, and then we'll move on to the next piece. Next step is the vibration motor. This one's pretty straightforward. This just, uh, put a little Loctite on it here. You definitely want Loctite on anything to do with the vibration motor. These are a little controversial. I uh, 
I personally don't like them very much. Um, they just shake the trucks apart. They, they look cool sometimes when you first start up the truck, but in reality, real trucks, <laughs> at least the ones I've seen, just don't shake as much as these shake them. But I, I generally always install them because you just pull the plug and you don't have to worry about it. And the MFC does have a feature where you can turn it up and down. So this just mounts with two. They're actually a special screw. They're a short, fat little screw. And uh, just mount it here. Then they give you two different weights. Uh, this is for the US trucks and this is for the Euro trucks. So we're going to use the, uh, the US truck weight. Again, Loctite. Mount this one here. A little bit of space between this and the case. it spins okay and then mount the cover with four screws and that takes care of the vibration unit. Okay, I'll put some those screws in and let's talk about lights. Okay, so we're going to talk about lights. So this truck has got two fog lights down here and this bracket is removable we don't even need to remove it so what we're going to do is take a set of five millimeter white lights and the MFC comes with two of them they have black and white wires one's for the headlights and one's for the fog lights pull this apart here okay and these just mount in like that. See what I mean? Pretty easy to take care of but in a truck that's already assembled. Now the, uh, the MFC kit comes with these little brackets right here and there's a couple different heights. We're just going to see which one fits. That one lines up so you just the wires just slide into this notch. And then a single screw holds it on. Now they have a, they show in the instructions a, uh, a photo etch metal backing piece in here, but you don't need it. You can use it if you want. I don't. It doesn't do anything. And that's all there is to the, the fog light here. I'll go ahead and put the other side on and then that's actually ready to mount back on the truck. Oh, well, next let's do the rear bumper. Uh, this is the Aeromax bumper, of course. Uh, very similar to the uh, King Hauler and Globeliner bumper. The uh, Grand Hauler bumper has more lights in it, but basically you do it the same way. So I'm just going to pop this cover off. And uh, identify... that's a long screw. Um, identified the color strings I wanted from the instructions. So the red string, which is our brake and tail light, you can see I already put one side in, just mounts in the red hole here. I'll bend these over. The turn signal mounts in there. Bend those over. Keeping them away from the, the mounting hole there. Slide this cover back over, which also holds the bulbs in. And replace the screw. As 
I said before, the great thing about these trucks, everything's screwed together, so you can open it up, play with it, work on it, change the lighting. There we go. Okay, now our rear bumper is uh, is ready to install. So we have the coupler, the front bumper, and the rear bumper ready to go. Now the control box is pretty straightforward. I just removed the screws from this case. We're just going to pull it out. I don't believe hardly any of the Tamiya trucks actually use the case. In fact, a lot of them don't even use this this front plate. Um, they give you parts for various trucks. For example, the King Hauler, they give you a step to mount it in. The Grand Hauler uh, steps are designed right from the start to fit it. Uh, many of the Euro trucks have a side panel that opens up to fit it. It's designed for it. Globe liners really don't have any suggestions. So in that case, I leave it in the box and mount it uh, inside the back panel make a little bracket that holds it above the battery. Okay, so there's our our little control panel. On the Aeromax they give you this fuel tank that replaces the tank that was in the kit and it's got a, a plate for the panel to mount. So first thing we do is mount this decal. And then this will just mount up from the bottom like that, and the screws hold it in. I might put one in for now. Uh, there's there's three control cables that plug into this. Again, you don't want to forget these. And I have seen cases where the trucks don't run properly, and that's because these have some fine little pins in here. There's some fine little pins in here. So you got to make sure when you snap it in that everything fits just right because I've seen them with bent over pins and that keeps them from working. So we'll plug those three in. They give you a, a slot right here for them to fit through. And then this just assembles like that. Now, just like the standard Aeromax tank, when you put it together, there is a capture nut that fits in here and in here. And those are used to hold the side panel on, so you don't want to forget those. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this together, and then we will install this and the bumper and uh, the front and rear bumper. So back to our chassis here. So now um, the speed control we're going to no longer need because uh, the MFC provides its own built-in speed control. So I'm going to have to remove that. The receiver I'm going to pop it up because I have it stuck down with double sticky tape and a couple pieces of tape here for the antennas. Nothing exciting there. And then I'm going to remove the floor plate. That's six screws and pull off the side panel. So I'll do those things and be right back. Here's the old tank that I pulled off, four screws, and the new tank, of course, with the control panel in it, held on with four screws. I did have to remove the battery box to uh, get access to one of the screws, but it's just got four screws. So again, just a bunch of screw removal and replacement. So I'll go ahead and install this side panel back on. And then we'll go to work on mounting the MFC uh, components onto the, the um, floor here. The uh, base plate, I bolted on this uh, vibration unit, so I just drilled four holes. I used the flat washer nuts with Loctite, and I had to grind away this little brace here 
and so this is ready now to install. You can see I've got the side plate back on. So the wires will just pull up through here and we'll get this mounted back on. Um, while I'm doing that, I'm going to remount the front bumper and pull those wires up. And then we'll, uh, we'll look at some of the rest of the wiring. I, and the way I do these, I, I do the complete chassis first. Um, do the light wiring, the coupler, all that stuff. And then I do the body separately. So we're going to go through the complete chassis, get it all up, get the MFC working. And then we'll do the body and plug it in. That way I have the body so you can unplug it and take it off. So I got my bumper mounted. I ran the wiring just along my servo wires and those will tuck in down here when I'm done. And now it's time to mount the MFC. So this is going to tape down uh, approximately here. I need to leave enough room along this edge for the wiring, enough room along the back for any cab things that might hit. And there's a slot down here for the battery plug to go in. And I've already checked and it won't fit after I have this taped down. So the first thing I'm going to do is run this through here, kind of organize it underneath, and then I'll go ahead and tape this down with, uh, with the double sticky tape that they, uh, they give you. Let's take a look here. It comes with a couple strips of this excellent double sticky tape. I'll just cut a couple of strips and go ahead and stick this down. I stick it down before I do any any other kind of work because I want to make sure all my wiring lines up with the MFC. So now it's time to uh, install the back bumper, but before I do that I'm going to tie up a little bit of the wiring. The way I do this is this loop between the two tail lights and all the wires get a tie wrap around them. And I'll pull it up so it's reasonably organized here. Like that. Clip that off. Now I've uh, played forever with how to hide these wires, but the best way I, I have found is with this spiral wrap. This is a two feet, two foot piece from Hobby Concepts. And you just start wrapping. Now you can do it in the truck. It's a lot easier to start it here. And you just wrap it around. And go forward. Now, I'm not going to go all the way forward because we're going to have those wires from the couplers join the wiring loom about here, so about that far up from the from the back end. So I will you can see how much neater that's going to be. Wiring and just it can really look messy, but once you get it organized, it's like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Now notice I didn't even uh, try and mark the left or right turn. I'll just do that later when I plug them in and test them. This over the, the tie wrap here. Get in there. There we go. Okay.
as you can see, it's part art form. Especially when the wires are loose like this. Okay, that's probably far enough. So put the back of the truck here. Let's kind of take a look. Yes, that's far enough. So what I'll do now is I'll run this loom underneath underneath this cross brace and this cross brace and over the top of the axles. And uh, once I get that done, then I will bolt the coupler plate back on. We'll flip it up and continue underneath. Now on the coupler, I just pull the uh, switch wire down underneath and then feed it down in through here so that I can twist it up in my spiral wrap. Uh, you'll notice that this coupler has a servo on it for a, a servo release. I'm not going to talk that, about that anymore in this video, but I will have a new video coming soon on how to do this. So you will see an extra wire in the loom, but other than that, everything's normal. So we'll feed that down through here and bolt that down. So I finished my spiral wrap and it's going to be kind of hard to see because it's black, but it runs up here, runs up here, and then I just brought it up through a hole in the chassis. Um, every truck's a little bit different. Um, one thing about grand haulers is the wires are too short. Um, that come with the MFC. I mean, they'll barely reach. So uh, I make a modification kit that helps to lengthen those, makes it a lot easier. But this has plenty of length. You can see now I can just run my wires over here. So uh, let, me, let me get this set and organized and we'll start plugging some things in and testing them. So now it's time to start doing something with some of this wiring. Uh, and it, it looks a mess, but really it's quite easy uh, if you do it one step at a time. Now, before I get started on that, I'm going to mention I am using a FlySky radio that's been modified by Hobby Concepts and pre-programmed so it's ready to install. Um, if you use one of these radios, you do it exactly like I'm showing. If, it's, if you're using a different radio, you can program these yourselves. I have video on how to do that. If you're using like a Tamiya radio or something, then it's going to hook up differently. So I'm hooking it up according to the way this radio works and it works fantastic and the way I hook it up is easy. So let's get started on the uh, on the hookup here. Okay, we've got our receiver still plugged in with uh, our steering servo and our shift servo from the original setup. So the first thing I'm going to do is unplug the steering servo and plug it into the MFC. Now my MFC of course is hidden behind this, this uh, vibration motor but the steering servo plugs into this top set of servo mounts right here and the brown wire faces the outside edge of the case. Brown or black depending on what kind of servo lead you have. So that takes care of our steering servo. Our shift servo is going to stay plugged in to the receiver in channel 5 which on this radio is this three position switch low, medium, and high gear. So. Now we plug in the leads from the MFC. And these are marked with a tag, so J4 is the first one and plugs into channel 1. Um, and then J6 plugs into channel 2. Now notice they're not in order. <laughs> That's easy to get wrong. Then J5 plugs into channel 3. And J7 plugs into channel 4. So now we've got our MFC plugged into our receiver. The next thing are these three cables from the, the control box. And you can't get these wrong because they're different sizes. 
So I'm going to just plug them in here just for show. But this, this little three wire one plugs in here in the middle. This medium size one plugs in over here on the right. And the big one plugs in way down here at the bottom. Man, it's hard to get into now. Okay, so those are all plugged in. So now we can actually test the system if we want. Um, I've got my wires that you can see in the spiral. These are all the wires from the back bumper. And then, of course, I have my my fog light wires, which are with my receiver. So I'm going to uh, uh, kind of organize these wires into a little bit better uh, organization, and then we'll um, we'll fire this unit up. I did a little bit of cleanup on the wiring here. You can see that I used a few tie wraps, and then I mounted a couple clips here and strung a wire in between them to hold these down tie wrap these up and now I've just got my my wires to plug into my MFC here so that's pretty straightforward and then I've got my fog light wire to plug in um, I haven't done any cleanup with these yet because I've been trying to decide where to mount it but I'm going to probably mount this on its edge like this and then tape the antennas back down and then just tie these up kind of behind it so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll, well actually I'm going to leave that open because I want to show how these wires plug into the MFC. I'm going to figure out how to tilt this up so you can see it better. So now I'm going to plug in a few of these, uh, these wires from the uh, back bumper. So if I take a look and I'll look at say the coupler switch. The coupler switch is right here. It's the green and black wire and it goes into J12 which is the bottom slot on the right hand side. So I just pull the green and black wire here. Get it out of the way and then it just and my head might be in there, I don't know. And it just plugs in. Okay. Next wire from the rear bumper is the red and black. Red and black I look at this as the tail lamp J19. J19 is the second one from the top. So that's all there is to it to plug in these lights. So with J19. And then we'll plug in one of the turn signals. Now, remember I said earlier that I didn't um, label these. You can label them. They come with these labels um, the, from Tamiya that just wrap around the wire. And it's not a bad idea to label them when you're done. I don't like to label them before pulling them through the truck because it makes it hard to get them through the little spaces that I go through. So how do I do it? Well, I just plug one in. So this is a rear um, turn signal. So we'll look at the rear, which is Winker R, are 23 and 24. So 23 and 24 are these two right here. So I'll just plug it into one of those and then I'll see which, if it's the right direction. If it's not, I'll just reverse it and then plug in the remaining one. So 23 is one, two, three up. So we will just plug it in right here. Three up. Okay, so that plugs that in. The final one I want to plug in right now is this black and white one from the front bumper, which is fog lights. So we're going to hear fog lights J17. And J17 is one, two, three, four down on the right. So we'll plug that in four down on the right. One, two, three, four. All right, so we've got those plugged in. Now finally, I haven't done anything with my speaker yet, but I'm gonna plug it in just for testing purposes. Uh, the speaker can only plug in one place. There's a brown plug right here and that way I'll have something that makes noise when I turn on my truck for testing. 
Okay, we'll put this thing back down on all four wheels, or all six wheels. So now it's time to fire this up. Uh, I'm sorry the video got a little choppy in there. I kind of lost my place and had to redo a few things. Anyway, we've got our wires plugged in. We only have one turn signal plugged in because we need to test which one it is. Um, I do have my receiver all plugged in and everything's all kind of tied away a little bit. I'm going to unplug, well, we'll leave it on for a minute. I was going to say I'm going to unplug the vibration motor, but we'll leave it on here. So we're going to plug in a battery and turn this thing on. Okay, so the very first thing to do is to map the radio to the NFC. There's a little button right here. This one right down here and just push it. Until the truck shuts down. Then you move your radio in this order. So you go left stick, top to bottom, right to left, right stick top to bottom, right to left, and then you push the button again, and the truck will start back up. So now, our horn works. We should have a throttle. We do. And we should have a uh, light. So I'll flip this down. You can hear the flashers. And there's the tail lights. Let's see if I can put this where you can see it. Now we'll try the turn signals. Okay, you can see that I'm turning left and the right turn signal is on, so I had a 50-50 chance of, uh, of getting that correct, and I got it wrong. So that's fine. So now what I'll do is take my turn signal wire and move it to the next spot. Notice I have the truck off. Then I'll plug in my other turn signal wire. Fire it back up. Now we'll test the turn signals. Right, left. So there we've got that first part all set. Matter of fact, most of it's set. Um, what I have to do now, so my, my fog lights are plugged in, all my tail lights are plugged in, everything on the body is plugged in. So all I have to do is neaten up some wiring. I'm going to take my receiver and I'm going to double sticky tape mount it like right here and tape down the antennas with some black electrical tape and then we'll go to work on the body. Well here's the finished chassis with everything hooked up. Um, so I have my fog lights are hooked up, all my tail lights are hooked up and the truck is in running condition. I can put a battery in, drive it around, turn on the fog lights, the brakes, and turn signals work. So now it's time to finish up the body. So we'll get to work on that. Okay, so on to the body. Now the body has got headlights, turn signals, these upper cab lights, and uh, of course the speaker has to go in here someplace since we didn't put it on the chassis. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the roof cap. Now, if you watch my build video on this truck, you'll remember that I used a screw to hold these on instead of gluing or taping them, which makes it much easier to take the roof cap off. So two screws here, two screws here, and, uh, and it comes off. There's a little tabs here in the front that hold it. We're going to take off the five upper cab lights. To do that I have to take off the dash. And then the uh, headlights I don't believe we even have to take off. So I'm going to take off the roof cap, the dash, the upper lights, and then we'll see what we've got. 
So the first thing I want to do is get the lights, the LEDs in these uh, upper lights. And in this truck, it's a little bit of a trick. The only way to do it is to clip the wire. So I'm just going to clip the wire here. And then it feeds from the front through this little slot in the back here. And then you can pull it through. Feed the LED through this hole. It is a it is a royal pain. Even if you were didn't glue the lenses on, you still have to pull it through this way to, to get the LED in there. And then what happens is there's a hole in the cab roof here, the back edge, and the light mounts. And then the wires come up on the inside, and then I'll just cut them and re-solder them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to I'm going to take all five lights, clip the wires, pull them through, mount them on the truck, and then solder the wires up. You can see my wiring now in the roof and that's all done and uh, now I, I put the uh, lights in one side but this is pretty simple there's a there's a special attaching bracket that comes with the MFC and so the the turn signal let me get this where you can see it just sits in here and it fits in like that the headlight fits in like that and then this bracket just screws in here to hold the bulbs in. So pretty easy. It's a lot easier with skinny fingers but I don't have skinny fingers so we'll work with the fingers I've got. All right. All right, I'll tighten up the rest of the way in a minute. So now I've got my headlights, turn signals, my marker lights, that's all the lights in the body. So the only thing left is the speaker. Now, the instructions don't show much. They say bolt the speaker to the roof. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mount the speaker here. So I'm going to cut, do some cuts, I'll make a piece of plastic to cover this to make a speaker box out of it and then we'll we'll uh, mount the speaker right up here in the top which I do in a lot of the trucks it fits good it leaves the interior kind of empty we'll see what happens when I drill the holes here where they come out you can see I drilled the four holes and they came out right in the middle of these beams so now I'm just going to cut something like this so my speaker opening is there and I'll just cut that with a with a razor saw and I'll come back and we'll see what it looks like well there's my hole my my four screw holes so this is going to mount like that and it's going to look like that underneath. So that that works good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and bolt this on, down. And then I'll cut a couple pieces of plastic uh, on both sides to cover these. To give me my speaker box effect. And I'll just glue those on with this, uh, with this E6000 glue. So I'll go ahead and get that done. And while I'm at it, I'm going to put the cap back on. You can see the speaker all mounted. A couple pieces of plastic I glued on there to, to seal it up. On the bottom, you can see the speaker in here. You can see the uh, headliner I made out of a sheet of plastic. And you can see how I just tape up the wiring inside the body so it doesn't flop all over the place. 
So now all I have to do are plug in these leads and put the body back on. Well, here's our finished truck. Let me go through uh, the operation. And first I'm gonna do the sounds and then I'll turn the volume down and we'll show you some of the lights. So the on off switch is underneath here. We'll turn it on. Obviously, we have our engine sound. Reverse. With a backing beeper. We have turn signal sounds. We have horns. And we have the engine or the, the trailer coupler sound. We also have a shut a shutdown sound and then a startup sound. sound down a little bit and we'll go through the rest of the operation here. So uh, on the, uh, the speeds we've got, and you can watch the back tires here, so there's, there's uh, full speed in low gear, second gear, high gear. Now also you can um, Adjust the speed. <laughs> Adjust the speed by moving this stiff stick left or right. So there's left, right, center. You can see that change. So effectively, you've got your throttle here all the way from creepy slow, um, and you can even go creepy slower by moving the stick to the left. So that gives you uh, the ability to run really slow. What you're hearing, since I turned the volume down, you're actually hearing the vibration motor a little bit more. And so you've got three-speed transmission, throttle, and three different gears here. Actually, that works out to be like a nine-speed transmission. Um, okay, horns again. Short horn, long horn flip down this switch and now we have lights so if we flip this up we get hazard lights both front and rear flip it up again to turn them off and then every time we flip this down it pages through one more set of lights so the first thing is our upper cab lights here do it again we turn on our headlights do it again we turn on our fog lights and do it again, it turns everything off. So, running lights, headlights, fog lights, off. Pretty straightforward. Flip that switch again, and now it's a horn. On the rear end, okay, the rear lights, um, when we run forward, um, we have brakes. We obviously have right and left turn, and of course the same hazard lights. And then um, we also have, if we flip this down and flip through the lights, our running lights. And those, of course, get brighter when you brake. So that's the lighting and the sound functions of the MFC. And there we go. Truck turned out really nice. All right, so there we go with our uh, MFC install in an already built truck. Of course, this is an Aeromax, and we showed some specific Aeromax things. I really like this truck. I think it turned out great. But what I really wanted to do with this video, besides showing off the Aeromax install, was to show that you do not need to install an MFC right when you build the truck. 
you can build the truck, you can run it, play with it, have a great time, and it's easy to add uh, sound and lights at any time, whether you use an MFC or a Bayer SFR, because the trucks come apart very easily with just screws. And, uh, and you can see how we did that. So uh, I always tell people, look, it, it, you know, go simpler to start with and build it and have fun and then start adding on. Since I built this truck, I changed it to aluminum wheels, obviously added the motorized coupler, put some diamond plate rear decking on it, and put the MFC on. And, you know, in the future, I might do more things. It's e they're easy to modify and a lot of fun to, to play with that way. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. It helps uh, expose the video to other people. Please subscribe to my channel. Check out my website at hobbyconcepts.net if you need to me a trucks or parts or whatever. Uh, would love to help fix you up. And uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.